So you've got a fat stack burning a hole in your pocket and an equally large hole in your hanger. And the only cure is some retail therapy in the form of a shiny new airplane. But how can you tell you're in for a good time and not disappointment? After all, whether your new purchase takes you to new heights emotionally and physically, or becomes a burning hole in the ground, somebody still made money. Let's get into some of the red flags that we have found mean we should pump our brakes a bit. First up, let's go over some warning signs for buying new airplanes. Number one, influencer aircraft. Obviously, we connect with our planes on an emotional level. Otherwise, we'd all be flying sticks with no decals on them, or worse, camera drones. But when we get super psyched about a new plane because it's endorsed by somebody who coerced us to smash a like button, then maybe the logical part of our brains is on idle. The two recent designs that come to mind here are the FT Freedom Fox and the E-Flight Draco. The Draco was marketed as a stole bush flying aircraft, but all of those scale details made it heavy, fragile, and finicky. People were definitely attracted to it, but we think that was because of its intense gravitational pull. It was so heavy that people blew out their suspension trying to get it to the field. Okay, some people like the thing for its scale details, and, well, that's all we can recall people liking about it. After all, bush planes shouldn't be obese McDonald's eating Americans. Change our minds. You might really enjoy it, and that's fine, but there were also plenty of people who were disappointed. And the FT Freedom Fox? Same issue. It was obese, had a small wing area for its weight, the landing gear was as brittle as a graham cracker, among other issues. And this will probably always happen with influencer aircraft, seeing as getting all those scale details perfect is a requirement that can't be met without significant pounds added. Oh, and the first version of the Freedom Fox was quickly recalled because people kept complaining about their ESC spontaneously combusting. Motor off! My, oh, it's on fire! Yeah, I have a fire. I've got a fire. See the smoke? Either way, if you have either of these aircraft and love them, we're very happy for you. But if you're a beginner considering buying one, it's probably best to know what you're signing up for. Number 2. Replacement Parts Eventually, no matter how much you try and baby your plane, something will break, and it's important to have replacement parts available to purchase. Given the recent supply shortages without the same shortage of supply with crashes, some leniency should be given to manufacturers. However, if you see every spare part is out of stock, it might be best to look for something else. You should also take note of what is even offered as replacement parts. For example, a common complaint with the Turbo Timber Evolution is the motor mount brakes. If you could believe it, they don't offer a replacement motor mount. You have to get an entirely new fuselage if your motor mount breaks. Are you really going to spend $75 and then take the time to move everything over? Sure, some people might, but things like this should be considered when purchasing, especially if you're on a budget. Number 3. Version 1 Aircraft this isn't a sign of a bad aircraft per se, but it should raise a red flag if you're not interested in gambling. Specifically, we're referencing Horizon Aircraft because they have a history of listening to consumers' complaints and fixing them with the version 2, version 3, and sometimes even version 4 iterations of their popular aircraft, such as the Timber. We personally had a lot of complaints about the Twin Timber, for example, but we are hopeful that the version 2 will fix these issues. We hated the gear on the Turbo Timber Evolution because replacing those springs as often as we did felt like a subscription service at times. But we bet that the new version will use the same gear as the Twin Timber, since everyone loved its durability. Point is, be cautious getting a version 1 aircraft. These rarely come out of the factory perfectly, and letting a manufacturer have some time to get rid of the kinks, especially by way of the planes being organically tested by us consumers, leaves you with the best chances of getting a good RC plane. Number 4. Paint versus stickers. Paint is really, really, really cool and looks good for about a day. The sun will beat on it. Your car will scratch it. Your wife will step on it. Your hanger will rash it. We babied our Flex Innovation Cessna 170 and at the end of a year of owning it, it looked like it was in an abusive relationship. Stickers can look tacky, but if you want your foamy looking as good as possible after a year or more and balsa isn't your thing, it would be best to look for something that doesn't use paint. Number five. Painfully obvious oversights. Why the original timber had the battery hatch located on the bottom of the fuselage is something our chair engineers still question to this day. Or how about the FMS Beaver's rudder servo being plastic geared and directly connected to the tailwheel, so one bad ground loop meant having to get a new servo? Or what about a jet that doesn't even have room for the recommended battery? The only way you'll find out these issues is by doing your homework, so be sure to read and watch reviews, and not just on the manufacturer's website, but also on RC Groups, YouTube, Instagram, you name it. Number 6. Planes not designed for transport. Some planes are easier to disassemble and reassemble. 
Anything over 1.5 meters, in our experience, is typically the point where we start taking the wings off to take it to the field, and some planes do this better than others. The Motion RC Flightline Bronco, for example, takes an entire village in our experience to get the wings on and off again. The FMS Beaver, however, takes two seconds and a half brain cell. There's also a bunch of biplanes that need the setup skills of an expert sailboat builder. If that's okay with you, nice, but if your time at the field is short, then maybe look for something easier. Wrapping up the warning signs of buying new aircraft, number seven, damn honey, you put on some weight. Often, when manufacturers fix prior problems with an airplane going to a version two, they do so in the form of adding more stuff and not taking it away. So when a new version of an airplane is released, it's almost always heavier than the old one. And of course, since the average ludicrous power fan greatly outnumbers the average lightweight performance enjoyer, these improvements come in the form of bigger motors, ESCs, and more structure to deal with all that thrust. For example, if you enjoyed the original Concendo as a cheap and cheerful motor glider that could cruise around or fly in strong enough slope or thermal lift, you were probably disappointed with the Evolution version. You could say the same for the Turbo Timber Evolution when compared to the OG Timber. Ready for it? The Evolution weighs almost one pound heavier than the OG. You absolutely can feel this in flight from a wing cube loading standpoint. In all fairness, the Fun Cub NG is also heavier than the OG Fun Cub, but not by nearly as much of a margin. What we're getting at here is just to be sure to check the specs on the newest revision of aircraft. If the size didn't change, but the weight went up, you're definitely in for a different experience, but hopefully not too much different. Now, let's take a look at the warning signs of buying a used aircraft. Number one, an RC plane that doesn't exist. Be extremely cautious sending people money over the internet when trying to buy a used airplane. Always do goods or services when using PayPal, and if anyone tries to convince you otherwise, run. Facebook is littered with scams. You're only safe meeting up in person and handing over cash, aside from being kidnapped. Number two, cheap servos. If you found an airplane that's ready to go with servos that are the cheapest thing that fit, then maybe reconsider your life. There's a bunch of great servos out there now from many new suppliers, so don't be fearful of trying something new. But if the 50cc gasser you found has $9 plastic geared Amazon specials in it, at best you will want to budget for replacements. And at worst, it's an indication that the builder may have cut corners elsewhere. Number three, cheap engine or motor ESC. Similarly, there are some surprisingly good cheap power systems out there. But if the motor grinds when you spin it and has no name on it, you should be prepared to replace it with something decent. That cheap ESC might spin the motor just fine, but it might also have a BEC that browns out when you put the flaps down. Similarly, we see tons of new people pick up a used gasser with a cheap no-name engine in it and give up on gas after hours of hard starting, inconsistent running due to air leaks, and mufflers falling off. Number four, wrong motor, ESC, and servos. There's nothing wrong with using something other than what the manufacturer recommends if it fits the bill. But if somebody hogged out the servo pockets of their airplane to fit whatever huge chonkers they had laying around, or put an undersized motor on their plane and a bunch of lead to balance it, then you need to figure out the time and expense of replacing those when you buy the plane. For a quick way to check, look at the recommended motor for the airplane. If what they installed has a similar KV in weight, then it's probably a decent replacement. On the other hand, sometimes people put the wrong stuff in an airplane, and that's why it doesn't fly well for them. Rather than fix it, they give up and sell the whole thing. You can sometimes pick these up for no money and have a great setup for a low investment if you put the right parts in. Number five, incorrect linkages. Have a quick look at the linkages on whatever you're buying. If they look janky, they probably are. Push gently on the surfaces. If the push rods bend before the servo moves, that's bad. If the push rods are barely threaded into the ball links or clevises, that's also no bueno. All of this can be corrected, but it takes time and the money for quality hardware can add up. It's also a big problem if it needs special parts that aren't available anymore, and you have to spend an hour and $40 out of your pocket at the hobby shop getting the right stuff. Number six, not being straight, the airplane. When buying used, the first thing you should look for is that the aircraft is straight. Your eye is fairly accurate for this. Does the stab sit in line with the wing? Are the ailerons warped? If the rudder is centered at the bottom, does the counterbalance line up with the fin? Maybe that plane that sat around for so long before it was sold had something set on the wing and it permanently took a set for some extra dihedral. Number seven, covering. Getting an old proven model like a Telemaster can sound like a great idea, but wait, can you get covering still? The same thing applies with replacement parts. Even plenty of modern ARFs are covered with some materials that you can't buy anywhere else. Maybe that's okay because your flying style means that if something gets broken, it gets really broken and you'll write the whole thing off. 
Or maybe you're okay with repairs that are a different color, Mad Max style. But if you need to make a quick patch from a stick that also got kicked up by the tires, maybe stick with something that has Aura Cover or Ultra Coat on it. Also, lots of off-brand covering doesn't deal with fuel nearly as well as the mainstream stuff, so it's covered in whatever coat. In this case, maybe stick with electric. At the end of the day, a bad aircraft to someone could be another's favorite. This was just things we found over our years of experience in the hobby that we dislike or have become cautious about when it comes to buying aircraft. If you've got anything we've missed, let us know down below. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you think the next timber should come without any landing gear to remedy the spring breaking issue. Or maybe hit subscribe if Balsa Birds are the master race because this year our New Year's resolution was to dive headfirst into them. Happy landings, bounce one on for us, and we'll catch you next week with a new upload.